Vier studievrienden zoeken samen hun weg in New York. De charmante acteur Willem, de excentrieke kunstenaar JB, de getalenteerde architect Malcolm en Jude St. Francis. Jude is teruggetrokken, slim en raadselachtig. En zijn vrienden weten wel beter dan vragen te stellen over zijn verleden. Ze proberen zijn pijn te verlichten, maar naarmate de decennia verstrijken dringt zich de vraag op of Jude wel verlost kan worden van de demonen uit zijn verleden. Hanya Yanagihara groeide op in Hawaii en Texas. Ze werkte bij de New York Times Magazine en debuteerde met notities uit de jungle. Een klein leven betekende haar wereldwijde doorbraak als schrijver en werd een bestseller in Engeland en de Verenigde Staten. Ik ontmoet haar in het Pulitzer Hotel in Amsterdam en vraag haar of ze net zo geëmotioneerd raakte tijdens het schrijven als ik deed tijdens het lezen van haar boek. From uh, page I think 300 I couldn't stop crying uh. and I asked a girlfriend who read it uh, why should I continue? Mm. Please give me a good reason. What 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 reason would you give? I you know This book is a very artificial book. A lot of things about it um, are borrowed from um, from fairy tales, and it's not meant to be a complete naturalistic novel. And it also asks the reader for a kind of surrender. It asks you to, I think, really give yourself over to the life of this book. And I think if you do, then you'll be re rewarded with a sense of intimacy and you'll be rewarded with the sense of being with these characters inside their lives and beside them as they live their lives. And I hope that it will be as rewarding and as punishing as any close relationship you might have with a person in real life. Um, that after a certain point, if you've been with someone long enough and intensely enough, you stay by them even as life gets very difficult because you feel that you have an obligation to see them through. But you feel so powerless because you want to help him, you want to grab him off the paper and put your arms around him. Did, did your own imagination sometimes scare you? Uh, no, but you did very much feel like his own creation, as much as he simultaneously and contradictorily felt like mine. There's, I think he's a frustrating character for the reader to spend time with. I think he's maddening. I think that what seems so clear to us um, is, is, is almost impossible for him to understand. And in a sense, I think the reader has um, the sensation that she's seeing his life much more clearly than he ever will. And that's one of the tragedies of his life, that he can never see um, beyond what he's been taught to feel and, 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 and to experience. And did it help you to think that the world also is basically good? I would hate it if people read this book and thought it was a book about good and evil, as if those are binaries that exist in the world, because mm -hmm. I'm not sure they do. I think that some people are more inclined to one sort of behavior than the other, but I think it is ultimately a human choice to make. And do you also think that maybe then, uh, because that comes back in uh, People of the Trees, uh, that is also culturally defined? I mean, that's a wonderful question. You know, one of the ideas I wanted to explore with uh, the people in the trees is cultural context mm -hmm. and cultural relativity. Are there any absolute wrongs in the world? Are there anything that is r repulsive from culture to culture? And there are actually very, very few. I mean, murder is probably the only one. Um, and almost everything else is, is about the particular culture and how it decides what it values. Mm -hmm. But in, in both of these books, I think there is an argument that it's human behavior Um, that although it might be culturally, human behavior might be culturally dictated, but ultimately it's a choice. And if we choose not to make that choice, then it's not something that we can blame on the culture around us. Your debut, you wrote 18 years 18 almost, years, uh, yes. Yeah, it took it. a very long time. And your second book, only 18 months. Yes. How come? You know, I don't know, and it's such an unsatisfying answer to give people. But if I knew, I would obviously... Um, figure out how to write more efficiently and faster. Not because I feel that I want to write books quickly, but just because it's a great rush being able to write something fast. It means that you are in the world of the novel in a much, much more intense way, and it feels almost that like a physical act. With the first book, um, it, it just, you know, I was lazy. I mean, there were years when I didn't write it at all, and I didn't think about it. It was also a much harder book for me to write. It's trickier in its construction. Um, there's a lot more science in it. 
and the research I had to do just took a lot more time than I expected. Do you feel uh, you have a moral responsibility as a writer? I, I, I feel that I have a moral responsibility to explore many, many different kinds of lives. I mean, fiction's only real question is, what does it mean to be human? And that's what visual artists explore too, with a different kind of language. Because of that, you should be able to confront lives that seem very unlike yours, very foreign to yours, very um, even detestable. And you should be able to do so with sympathy and with a wholeness. How does it feel, all the attention and all those interviews, and you need to talk about the book all the time? Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's lovely. It's, it's a great honor, and all writers know it happens so rarely. And um, there's so many beautiful, powerful books published every year, and it really is luck, those that, that actually surface and those that don't. Um, and the thing about writing and writing fiction is that writers do it and continue writing books whether they get attention or not. I think the best compliment that I could get about this book is if people finish it and start questioning fundamental things they thought they believed about love and friendship and family and obligation and life itself. Is life worth living? Is there a point at which it's not? Um, and, and, and that to me would be a reader who's read the book um, wholeheartedly and um, and let it have its effect on them. Thank you, Hanya, for this uh, Thank you interview. so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.